Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still on mathematics and three calculus uh, that is working on uh, past exam papers. That is uh, a pre-2014 question paper where we are given question number four to consider the function of y is equal to one minus four x squared. 4.11 was to determine the derivative dy dx from first principles. All right. What is it that we can do in this case, in this case that we are having? Uh, all right, so that is our question 4.1, where we are given y is equivalent to 1 minus 4x squared. And we are asked to apply or to use only the first principles. All right, where we know that the derivative that is taken from the first principles is taken from the formula, where we understand that the derivative of y with respect to x is equivalent to the limit as h is approaching to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x, everything over h, which is uh, uh, the formula that you're going to take and you're given this formula. That means we can determine f of x plus h from f of x. Remember, f of x is that original function that you're given, y is equal to, meaning to say we have our f of x represented by y as one, minus 4x squared, an expression that is in terms of x. And what we need in this case is to find f of x plus h. So f of x plus h is that expression that you're going to obtain after substituting x plus h in place of x into the original function where there is x, you substitute x plus h. So this is going to be given as 1 minus 4 into this part where there's x squared, but now you're going to replace this as x plus h squared. So what are we going to do? Expand the brackets, simplify further, uh, taking note that this is going to be one minus four into, never be tempted to subtract one and minus four. This part cannot be supposed you are multiplying, so you can't subtract this part. What you need is to expand the first, the bracket of x plus h squared, which we can take from our identity. Uh, remember, guys, I told you that the expansion of a plus b squared gives us a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So this is what we have in this case, x plus h squared. So this is our a, our b represented by x. So it's going to be x squared plus 2xh, where we are multiplying a and b. So it's 2 times x times h plus b squared, which is our h, so it's going to be h squared. So what you need is to also remember your identity, this part of uh, expansion of uh, quadratic uh, brackets in this case. All right, so this is what you're going to apply. Uh, in this case, now we can expand our bracket by negative four. Negative four times x squared, that will be negative four x squared. Negative four times positive two xh, that will be more, minus eight uh, xh. Negative four by a positive, this will be a negative four h squared. So this is our expression for f of x plus h. The one that we need into the simplification or into our derivative. So in place of uh, f of x plus h, we are going to substitute this. So meaning to say the derivative of y with respect to x is going to be the limit as h is approaching to zero of f of x plus h, which is this function that we uh, obtained. So we're going to substitute as it is. That will be 1 minus 4x squared minus 8xh minus 4h squared. Then we subtract our f of x and noting that our f of x here is an expression. So whenever you're subtracting, open a bracket for that one. So that's a negative. You subtract everything. That is, you subtract 1 and minus 4x squared together by opening a bracket, and everything is over h. h is the one that we are supposed to limit to 0. But we can't apply the limit now because we are having this in the denominator. So h cannot be equivalent to 0 in the denominator. This will be... Uh, not possible for us to simplify because it will be approximating to infinity. So that's why we can't substitute here. So what you can do is to at least expand from the numerator and uh, see what is going to happen later on. dy dx is equal to the limit as h is approaching to zero. So let us expand 1 minus 4x squared minus 8xh 
minus 4h squared is going to remain as it is, but we've got negative 1 times x, which is going to be negative 1, uh, negative times 1, sorry, which is negative 1 times 1, that's negative 1, negative 1, and negative 4x, that will be a positive 4x squared, that is x squared, yes, so it will be a positive 4x squared, and everything is still over h. So like I said, we can't determine the derivative of y with respect to x since we are still having an expression uh, uh, h in the denominator. So we need, we need to get rid of that h that is uh, in the denominator. So how can we get rid of this h in the denominator? We have got like terms that we can uh, combine together. That is 1 minus 1 here, which gives us a 0. Minus 4x squared and the plus 4x squared. That gives us a zero also. So meaning we remain, we are remaining with minus 8xh minus 4h squared on top, everything over h. This can be simplified further. As we can see, h and h is common. So we can factor out that h, meaning to say we are going to have the limit as h is approaching to zero. Of if we factor out h here, we are going to remain with from the numerator, h is common, so that's minus 8xh and h, this one and this one cancels, you remain with negative 8x. Minus 4h squared and h, h and this cancels, you remain with minus 4h. So this is what you're going to remain with, everything over h. So here we can divide since these two are the same. So that is where you can apply the limits now where h is approaching to zero because we no longer have the x in the denominator. We are just left with minus 8x minus 4h. We do not have the, that h that we had before in the denominator. So that's where we can apply our limits to say if h is approaching to zero, in place of h, we substitute a zero there. So that means we are going to remain with negative 8x because this whole part will be a zero. So therefore, our derivative of y with respect to x is going to be uh, negative 8x minus zero, which is minus 8x. All right, so this is the procedure that you are supposed to take whenever you're working with the first principles. All you need is your formula. From the formula, the expansion of that formula from the f of x that you are given, you find your f of x plus h, then substituting into the formula, uh, then we can simplify further up to the final answer. All right, so, so that was four marks for that. Determine the gradient of the function on 4.12 uh, at a point where x is equal to 1. How can we determine the gradient of the function where x is equal to 1? All right, so the gradient is simply a derivative with respect to x. This is our derivative with respect to x that we determined before. So what we are simply going to apply in this case is this concept to say the gradient is equivalent to the first derivative, which is dy dx at the given point, at the given point. So at that given point, we have got the value of x that we are going to consider. Here we are given at a condition where x is equivalent uh, to one so when x is equal to one we can substitute all right this is the value of x when x is a one what you can simply do because we have got our dy dx here we say dy dx is minus 8x and i'm saying the gradient is equal to the derivative of y with respect to x which is minus 8x so this is uh minus 8x the one that we got from dy dx but at the given point that is we have to substitute the value of x now that we are given, which is at x is equal to one. This is minus eight x and our x at the point is one. So that will give us the numerical value of the gradient, which is going to give, which is going to be a negative eight, negative two, negative eight by one. That will be a negative eight in this case. So this is how we can determine the gradient, the numerical value of the gradient. The gradient expression is your dy dx or the first derivative with respect to x. So that was our question. Then on 4.2, the application of our derivatives in this case to find dy dx. If we are given y is equal to the square root of x 
minus x squared minus 2x everything over x squared leave the answer with positive exponents and in said form so how can we rewrite this all right so let us just uh let us just try to do this all right i want the question so i'm just gonna try to increase a little bit all right so this is our question guys that you're given so what we need in this case we're given y is equal to the square root of x so if you are to check from the square root of x what we need is to rewrite this square root of x in a format that is uh, applicable, that we can find the derivative. Remember what I say that uh, if we have y is equal to ax to the exponent of n, therefore we can find the derivative of y with respect to x being a n x to the exponent of n minus one. You just multiply exponent, subtract one. And also if y is equal to ax, therefore the derivative of y with respect to x is a. If y is equal to a, which is a constant, the derivative of y with respect to x gives us a zero for any constant that we might have. So in this case, what we need is to rewrite in the format, in this major for this or major format that are all this or whatever that you have in this case. All right. So the square root of x from our laws of exponents, that is uh, to the exponent of a half. So meaning to say we've got y is equal to x to the exponent of a half minus I said previously, whenever you are dividing with, uh, where, where we've got a common denominator like this part, we are dividing this whole part by x squared, meaning to say x squared is affecting each and every term. So what you're going to do is to separate minus x squared over x squared minus 2x over x squared. The x squared can be separated uh, between these two terms. So we are going to find y being equal to x to the exponent of a half minus, uh, still in our bracket, let us simplify this part. x squared into x squared, that's a one. So this cancels, you get a one minus. Here we are having a two. What about x and x squared? What is going to happen? You are dividing the bases, which are the same. So you subtract the exponents. So this will be x to the exponent of a one, this one on top, this is a one, minus two. So one minus two, that's a negative one. So meaning to say we've got minus two X to the exponent of minus one. With this format, guys, it is going to be very, very easier for us to differentiate or to find the derivative. So what are we going to do? Let us expand our brackets. Like I said, we've got a bracket in this case, affecting with an one, so that will be negative, times one, so this is same as negative one. So it's negative one times one, which is negative one. Negative one times a negative two, that will be a positive two, but we've got x to the exponent of a minus one. All right, don't consider this guys, it was something else. So this is what we have in this case. Now we have the format, this typical format of y being in this format. So what you can do is to find the derivative there. So what is going to be? the derivative of y with respect to x. All right, we said we are going to multiply by the exponent half here, multiplies a one, this is a one, so it's half times one, which is a half. x to the exponent of, you subtract one, so it's half minus one, any minus one. So that will be a negative half. Okay, minus one is a constant, just like y is equal to a. And I say the derivative of a constant gives us a zero. So there's nothing that you're going to get here. It's a zero. All right, so we move on to this part. 2x to the exponent of negative one, we multiply by negative one. So it's two times negative one, which is negative two x. We subtract negative one. We subtract one on the exponent. So it's negative one, negative one, which is a negative two. So that's our answer. But if you check, we are told or we are given an, an indication that leave the answer with positive exponents and in set form. So it's not just having this answer. It must have positive exponents. So that's the first thing that you're going to have. Let us rewrite this as positive exponents. So how do I remove a negative? Remember that negative simply means one over. So this will be one over already this part it was supposed to be like this one over two like this times x to the exponent of minus half which is one over x to the exponent of a half so you multiply one and one which gives us this one here then we multiply two times x to the exponent of half that will be two x to the exponent of a half remember if we are multiplying we multiply only denominators to denominators numerator to numerator 
All right, so that's the same thing here. We've got minus two. X is the one that is raised to the exponent of minus two. So it will be over X squared. So take note on this part. All right, so this is our derivative. We have written this as positive exponents, but we still have a condition that we are given. Also, it must be in a said form. Think of the square root of something that is in said form. So that is how we have our said form on x to the exponent of a half. Remember, to the exponent of a half simply means the square root of. And it is not 2 that is affected. It's x, not 2. So the x is the one that will be affected with the square root. So it's 2 square root of x like this, minus 2 over x squared. So this is going to be our derivative of y with respect to x in this case, in terms of positive exponents and also in set form. So these are the stages that you're supposed to take. As you can see, yeah, it's just a little bit that you need to work on, work on your derivatives. As you work on your derivative, don't forget exponents because that is the background of our simplification, the use of exponents. So that topic has to be revised again as we are moving uh, each and every topic has got something to do with another topic. So the same with the, the derivatives. As long we have got exponents part. And even without that, the, just the basic way of writing a log in order for you to differentiate it, it must be in, a, in this format of uh, ax to the exponent of n. Meaning to say there is no way we are supposed to go back to our exponents, revise them as much as we can. All right, guys, that's what we had from Maison African Motives, working on mathematics and three till we meet again.